What up, guys? This is Taylor, and, uh, oh, my bad, I should call you sluts, because apparently you guys just love to be degraded and called sluts, and you're just a bunch of masochistic little bastards out there that love that kind of stuff. But whatever, to each their own, I'm not here to judge. But, uh, anyway, doing some more Twitter questions and answers and whatnot, and so if you want to follow me on Twitter and, uh, tweet those at me when I request them, uh, you're more than welcome to. If you're one of the people who, for some reason or another, are very averse to Twitter, no pressure, I don't really care, I'm not gonna lose sleep over it, but, uh, you should know that for every rating and favorite on this video, I am going to smile to myself and maybe I'll even I'll, I'll clap you each get a clap you get a rating BAM I'm like Oprah you get a clap you get a clap you get a clap that's what it's gonna be like uh, none of you will be here I'll be here alone in my apartment doing it but you know that's fine I don't it's not like a lunatic thing to do to clap to yourself and yell inane babblings to yourself and just give praise to people who don't exist for internet likes that's not weird that's a normal thing to do for an adult you know but uh, anyway on to the questions let's start it up all right David D. Field, or David with two Ds, Field. Would you give up your dignity for the privilege of becoming a celebrity? Um, you know, that's really interesting, because usually it seems as though celebrities have a lot of dignity, and that's why they are celebrities, you know? It, it, instead of people being famous for their merits like they used to, uh, it seems that modern-day society lauds people based on their ability to garner attention. In other words, you are famous because you could get famous, and it's not about your work and your art and your, your, uh, what you're doing with your famousness or whatever. It's about you. It's about that narcissistic belief. Like, look at a Katy Perry or a Lady Gaga. It's not about their songs. It's not about the art. It's about them. It's about self-glorification. And so... It seems as though you could be an artist or a famous person who gave up their dignity like 50 years ago, but now it seems like you pretty much have to be dignified and, you know, kind of almost arrogant to be famous just because that's the nature of the beast. And I'm not talking about old famous people and people who have actually earned their keep. Um, I'm talking about people like, uh, for example, Gucci Mane. He's a rapper, a uh, beyond talentless. He doesn't have a semblance of talent. Uh, I guarantee you could perform a full cavity search and you wouldn't find one gran granule of talent. Not a single one. And uh, that's just, that, that's almost like a spit in the face. Every time you hear a song like that on the radio, it's like someone is spitting in your face. Because you know there are millions of people out there who are more talented than him and who can sing well and who deserve that spot on the radio. But they're not going to get it because they don't have a dumbass tattoo on their face and they're not going to get a record deal because the record labels know it doesn't matter how good the music is. It's just like Justin Bieber. It matters about how you can pander to your audience. The reason that Justin Bieber is popular isn't because he's a good singer. He is a good performer, though. He has good charisma. The reason is because he's a vague, uh, pretty much completely bereft of personality, uh, just a vapid, just just a shill of a human being, you know, just someone who doesn't really have a personality, and that's good because young girls are able to project their dreams and what they want in a guy onto him, and then they can have their masturbatory fantasies and whatnot. So that's how I feel about that. Uh, as for me becoming a celebrity, no, I would not give up my dignity for it because what is the use of a ton of people respecting me if I can't respect myself, you know? But uh, that went longer than I thought. That's what she said. So, what's your view on the new consoles from Mark Wood LFC, uh, PS4, Xbox 720. I haven't looked into the PS4 at all, uh, just because, honestly, I had a PS3 for a while. I didn't really enjoy it. The main thing with the PS3, like, you always hear about the console wars and all the people pissed at each other for it, but the big thing for me with PlayStation is I just, I cannot use the controllers. I just can't. They're too small. You feel like your hands are just, like, wrapped all the way around them. I just really don't care for it. And uh, Since day one, I've always been an Xbox guy. Uh, even back when uh, the Xbox controllers, if you played original Xbox, you remember those huge fat just behemoths of controllers that like made you feel like a friggin dwarf playing uh, but those were terrible but even those were uh, preferable to the tiny little baby controllers that PS3 has but I mean to each their own apparently if you can get good at a controller uh, PS3's are smoother and easier to use so you know maybe I'm missing out but uh, as far as the Xbox 720 I'm going to be 100% honest and say, regardless of what features it has and doesn't have, I'm going to buy one. You know, I'm not going to pretend like I'm not going to give Microsoft my money. As soon as it comes out, I'm going to sprint to the store, buy one, just like everybody else. Uh, so honestly, doesn't even matter. Doesn't even matter. I'm going to play it anyway. Uh, so, next person. Play with Niz. If you only had one week to live, how would you spend it? Note, see loved ones is a one day left to live answer. All right. So I guess then uh, the seventh day would, as you said, be spent with my loved ones. Uh, but what would I do? Actually, no. I want to spend the first day with my loved ones, so then all the rest of the week can just be full of ridiculous nonsense. Uh, the first thing I would do is try and get in contact with Scarlett Johansson, and the Make-A-Wish Foundation would be that um, she would have to come to my apartment, and we would have to have sex a minimum 
um, of a thousand times, and that would be day one. I'd be very busy that day, probably burn a lot of calories. I'd be in good shape for the rest of the week, though. Uh, day two, I would go bungee jumping because it's one of those things that I would never do right now just because I'm, I'm really just kind of scared of that kind of stuff. But if I were going to die anyway, I would do it. You know, there's no reason not to do something like that. And I would go on like an adrenaline trip. I'd probably go on like sand dunes and stuff for those, uh, those buggies. Like, you know what I'm talking about. You, uh, you can look up those videos on YouTube where people have those really fast sand buggies and they're driving on the sand dunes wherever the hell they do that. I don't know where they do that, but I'd find a way there. And for the sake of this answer, let's all pretend that I'm Nightcrawler and I can teleport around. It's be much easier. Uh, by that logic, actually, I don't even have to try and get in contact with Scarlett Johansson. I can just teleport to her house right now. Who cares if I get slapped with a restraining order? I'll be dead in a week, you know? No big deal. Um, the rest of the week, I feel, I feel like intermittently throughout this entire time, I would be incredibly drunk and uh, eating just an inordinate amount of terrible food for me. Like, because there's no point to not want to gain weight. And even if you gorge yourself for a week, you really can't gain that much weight in a week, or at least I don't think you can. Uh, so I, I would still make a decently pretty corpse after getting all my, uh, my love juices out in the, in the first night. So anyway, do a lot of crazy uh, adrenaline junkie kind of stuff. Uh, definitely, sh what else? What, what's, what's, what's a good adrenaline thing? Maybe water skiing? Like, uh, water skiing on the ocean? Is that exciting? I don't know. Like, for some reason, I know that's not even like an adrenaline-filled event, water skiing, but for some reason, just I really want to go water skiing again before I die. I've only water skied once, and it took me like three times to get up, but I finally got up, and then it was so much fun, and I loved it. And it was on a lake, too, so I can't imagine how much more fun it would be uh, on an ocean. So that's my answer for that. And then on the last day... Um, I would have to kill myself. I, I wouldn't let the disease get me. Screw that. The disease is not going to get the satisfaction. I would eat probably 10, on the last day, I would go to the top of the Empire State Building and eat a dinner consisting of like 10 pounds of black beans and a bunch of Brussels sprouts and just gorge myself on everything that is terrible in the world and would smell awful and like just a bunch of raw red meat and like just raw pork and like stuff that I, a, a sane person would never eat just the most terrible fermenting awful stuff and then I would just sit on the top there with my family and let that all ferment in me and then uh, then I'd wave goodbye and I'd jump off the building and I'd splat at the bottom and all that disgusting stuff that I ate would explode out and somebody would have to clean me up and that'd be so funny like that'd probably be like the top rated post on Reddit that day or something like, hey, this dude killed himself like on the way down because cancer was getting him. Decided to eat a bunch of Brussels sprouts, lol. But uh, anyway, that was more in depth than I thought. Pretty good for winging it though. Um, anyway, next person, R L H or R R I no R L H 1994. People who use being drunk as an excuse to do stuff, but if you're sober, it's wrong. Uh, I mean, obviously, sometimes being drunk is an excuse. Your inhibitions are lowered, and so you do dumb stuff. But uh, one thing I don't like is when people pretend as though something they said or something they did is invalidated because they were drunk. Like, if you do something stupid and you make a dumb decision uh, and you're drunk, you're still accountable for that. You still have to, you know, uh, face the jury or the piper or whatever that saying is. I don't know. Uh, pay the piper, that's the saying. You still have to pay the piper after you're uh, hammered one night if you say something or do something stupid. And uh, it seems like it doesn't work that way for guys. It seems like when a guy gets really drunk and does something stupid, it's like, oh, he's an irresponsible drunk idiot. But like when a girl gets drunk and does something stupid, they're always like, oh, guys shouldn't have let her get that drunk, which uh, to me is pretty insulting because it seems as though if you want to treat women with respect, you should give to them that same level of intellectual merit that you give men by saying, hey, women are accountable for their actions when they're drunk, so they're that just like men are, you know, equally. But uh, I don't know. I agree with you that people shouldn't be able to use drunkenness as a perpetual excuse for bad actions. But uh, at the same time, if someone says something stupid to you or is hurtful and they're drunk, uh, take it with a grain of salt because obviously they're drunk. But uh, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, leave a rating. If you didn't, yell at me in the comment section. And uh, I love you, and I will talk to you soon.